evening, everybody. I'm Carrie Weber, and I am the executive director of the Fairfield University Art Museum. And it is my great pleasure to be with you this evening to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Fairfield University Art Museum. Before we begin, I wanted to just take a minute to remind everybody how this museum came into being and um, what it took to get us to this, to this place uh, today. Um, museums don't just happen. They are uh, a complicated process. And uh, I wanna just take you back in time for just a minute. So the idea for a museum originally came from uh, Dr. Oren Grossman, former academic vice president, who was strongly supported by art history professors Philip Elisoff, Catherine Schwab, Maurice Rose, and our former colleague, Jose, Jesus Escobar. These five were passionate about creating a, an art museum, which would give Fairfield U University students the privilege of learning through direct experience with original works of art. The art history faculty, led by Dr. Escobar, wrote a successful National Endowment for the Humanities Challenge Grant, which created an important endowment for the museum. Senior administration, including former university president, Father Jeffrey Baker, <coughs> Oren Grossman, and former associate vice president for academic affairs, Mary Frances Malone, and our colleagues in advancement, rose to meet the challenge of raising the needed matching funds. Their support for this audacious project, remember this was during and just after the market crash of 2008, led university trustee John Meditz to become the lead donor funding the renovation of the lower level of Bellarmine Hall. Centerbrook Architects, with oversight from Director of Facilities David Frasinelli, lovingly created an award-winning exhibition space built to the highest standards of security and climate control. Dr. Jill Duby was appointed the founding director and chief curator of the then named Bellarmine Museum of Art. And I, who had been working with the art history faculty for the previous five years, was in a position to dive into the project at her side. Jill was instrumental in building a strong foundation for the museum, creating and implementing myriad policies, plans, and procedures. She began an ambitious special exhibitions program, which introduced both the university community and the greater Fairfield community to the museum and forged strong foundational relationships with faculty, staff, and donors. Jill was also responsible for adding the Thomas J. Walsh Gallery as a new space for the museum, vastly increasing our ability to present exhibitions of modern and contemporary art. Jill was recruited by the Lowe Art Museum, and after a national search, Dr. Linda Walk Simon joined the museum as director and chief curator. Under Linda's leadership, the museum changed its name to the Fairfield University Art Museum and she was able to expand our staff to include a curator of education and academic engagement. The undisputed highlight of Linda's tenure was her curation and presentation of the exhibition, The Holy Name, The Art of the Jesu, Bernini and His Age, and the publication of its accompanying 600 page exhibition catalog. This remarkable international loan exhibition brought record numbers of visitors to the museum and increased our visibility in the international museum world, which brings us to today. After Linda's departure, I was thrilled to be appointed as the museum's executive director. And I'm so happy to be your MC tonight as we celebrate all of our achievements of the last 10 years. We have a fun, fast paced program for you. So with no further ado, we're gonna just jump in and get started. It is my great privilege to introduce the provost of Fairfield University Dr. Christine Siegel. Thank you so much, Carrie. It's my pleasure to be here this evening with all of you. Um, to welcome to all of those who are viewing into this webinar and welcome back to Jill and to Linda. Um, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, as provost, I now sit in the role that was previously titled Academic Vice President that Oren Grossman had, who we just heard about. And um, like those visionary art history faculty and Oren and President Von Arcs, I recognize the key role that art and the arts play in carrying out our academic uh, mission as a university. 
here at Fairfield in the academic division, our purpose is to create and sustain a scholarly community, a community of learners that in the Jesuit Catholic tradition cultivates intellectual curiosity, advances human potential, and seeks the truth that is God. The arts, particularly the visual arts, are central to that type of an educational experience and indeed have been central to Jesuit education for well over 400 years. Arts allow the intellectually curious to create, connect to the creativity and full human potential of not only the artist him or herself, but to all of God's humanity that is represented in the arts. In, in so doing, it allows that curious um, engager to expand his or her own thinking and to see the beauty that is God in the world as it's displayed through the arts. It's hard to imagine that a Jesuit institution of higher education could have existed without an art museum, but we are so fortunate here at Fairfield to have the Fairfield University um, Art Museum to help us advance that mission. Um, we're happy that we have the generous donation of John Menitz and others who've contributed to its work over the years, not only with their founding gifts, but with their time, money, and donations uh, to our collections. Um, in a few minutes, we're gonna see a short video that um, overviews 10 years um, of the art Oh, here we go, oh, for 10 years of the Fairfield University Art Museum. Um, and so I think without further ado, we've got it queued up and ready to go. Uh, so this is just in a few minutes, a quick overview of 10 years of the art museums at Fairfield University. Thank you. What is art? A connection? A transformation? An expression of spirit? An inspiration for change? A decade ago, a vision for an art museum came to life at Fairfield University. Through the passion and support of many faculty members, administrators, generous benefactors, friends, and students. Today, the award-winning Fairfield University Art Museum is a dynamic space for engagement with the visual arts on campus where the museum presents its small but choice permanent collection of European and American paintings, drawings, prints and photographs, and a growing collection of Asian, African, and pre-Columbian objects. Long-term loans of medieval objects from the Metropolitan Museum of Art and Antiquities from the Yale University Art Gallery add interest and depth to the galleries. Special exhibitions rotate through the Bellarmine Hall Galleries and the Walsh Gallery, sparking creativity and innovation, fostering cultural literacy, teaching empathy, and catalyzing social change. At Fairfield, we believe that art connects us, enhances our lives, expands our experience. Art has impact. Over the last 10 years, we have offered 500 free field trips to over 25 different K-12 schools and have served over 10,000 university students. 60,000 patrons have walked through our doors. We have curated 52 exhibitions, offered 42 exhibition openings and receptions, 70 gallery talks, 73 lectures, 32 workshops, 57 family days, 26 film screenings, 24 audio tours, 12 panels and forums, 5 concerts, and 2 symposia. We have grown the collection by over 2,000 works of art. We have collaborated with some of the most important art institutions in the world as a borrower and as a lender. Celebrating 10 years of art, culture, and outreach offered free to our community. Art is transformative. Learn more at fairfield.edu slash museum. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that. Gave you a little sense of what uh, we've been busy with for the last 10 years. <laughs> Um, thank you, Christine, for your, um, for your uh, remarks. I appreciate them very much. Um, so we are going to move along. And uh, now joining us is my friend and former colleague, Dr. Jill Dupie. As I mentioned, Jill has served as the founding director and chief curator of the museum from 2010 through 2014. 
and currently serves as the Beaux Arts Director and Chief Curator of the University of Miami's Low Art Museum. Welcome, Jill. Thank you, Carrie. And uh, it's really an emotional evening for me. I can't believe it's been 10 years, but it's so special to see live friends like Carrie and John Meditz and others this evening, as well as inanimate friends uh, in the gallery shots that we saw. Carrie asked for me to speak very briefly about my most um, vibrant or, or important memory. And I, and I have too many to share, but I think it's really tough to top the opening of the museum 10 years ago. Witnessing the birth of a new cultural organization, an art museum, is, is a rare privilege. And I, I'm not sure if the appropriate metaphor is handmaiden or mother, but I was one of them. And as a matter of fact, for a very long time, I likened the opening of the Bellarmine to the birth of my four, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the opening of the museum to the birth of my fourth child. And my other three were interspersed in, the, in those video clips. So thank you for that sweet walk down memory lane, um, Carrie and company. But it was really a special evening to um, embark on this incredible journey uh, of opening a new museum on our campus at a very unlikely time. And certainly John Meditz played uh, the most significant role in making it all possible. And my gratitude continues to this day, as, do, as, uh, as it does for many of those whom Carrie had already mentioned, including Father Von Arks, Paul Fitzgerald, Oren Grossman, and of course our dear faculty um, colleagues uh, at Fairfield, including Philip, Kathy, and Maurice. Um, but really, I doff my cap this evening to Carrie above all. Carrie has been there since before the beginning of this project when she was working um, in a very different capacity with the art history team, but she was really my right hand throughout the whole process and truly the museum today is a testament to her hard work. I'm sorry that I wasn't there to be a colleague of Linda's. It would have not been possible for obvious reasons, but it's clear the impact that you left as well and, and I congratulate um, and thank you because uh, I will always call the Bellarmine the Bellarmine Museum and it will always retain a very special place in my heart. So thank you all for including me this evening and heartfelt congratulations on a job ex exceedingly well done. Thank you, Jill. Um, thanks for your memories of that time. Um, yeah, it, it, was, it was like giving birth. <laughs> um, next up, we have um, my friend and former colleague, uh, Linda Walk-Simon, Dr. Linda Walk-Simon. Linda was the director and chief curator of the museum from 2015 through 2018. She currently serves as visiting professor at the Institute of Fine Arts at New York University. Thank you, uh, Linda, for being with us tonight. Thank you, Carrie, and everybody assembled here. Of course, I wouldn't have missed it. And since we're using the metaphor of childhood, if Jill was the, the midwife and the mother, then I guess I took over when the child was what? A toddler, a preschooler, kindergarten? Um, I stepped into some mighty big shoes following in Jill's footsteps. Um, and just felt privileged to work with such a, a, a choice collection in such a beautiful, elegant space. And then set about to think how we could possibly grow that collection to bolster its essential function as a teaching institute. And there nothing replaces the experience for students and not just art history majors, but anybody with just wants to know about the world through through its glorious artistic creations. Nothing replaces the experience of a firsthand encounter with works of art. And so one of the things that um, I feel very gratified by is that we were able to grow the collection through gifts, through uh, the incredible um, uh, being given the print collection of printmaker James Reed by establishing a friends group who helped us raise money to make some major acquisitions by the ongoing support of the person we'll be hearing about uh, all night, John Meditz. Um, so that's because it's organic, it's not static. So to continue that metaphor of moving through a life cycle to grow the museum. Carrie already um, hinted at what my, the accomplishment that will sort of stay with me as a life defining moment um, in my professional career. And that was the exhibition um, devoted to the art of the Jesu, the mother church of the Society of Jesus in Rome. And because of that connection, it was only because of Fairfield being a Jesuit institution and the enthusiastic support of everybody at the university, um, from Father Bonarx and Mark Nemec when he came to 
down to the security guards and the carpenter shop. And, and there are too many people to name, but I really do believe there's not a person on the campus who did not rally and, and, and throw their energy into bringing that incredible exhibition to fruition. And to this day, I pinch myself. The highlight for those of you who saw it was the loan of the early sculpture by the great Italian Baroque impresario sculptor, John Lorenzo Bernini of the university's patron saint, Robert Bellarmine, Roberto Bellarmino from his tomb in the Church of the Jesu that had never before left Rome. Every museum, the Louvre, the Getty, the Met, had asked to borrow it over the years and the answer was always no, but because we decided to bypass the ministry in Rome and go straight to the superior general of the society and have him um, intercede on our behalf for the loan, the loan came through and with it several other glorious works from the Jesu. So we were able uniquely to be able to tell the story of the foundational century of the order and of the church. And so I remain immensely grateful to all my colleagues and friends at Fairfield. I followed in big footsteps, as I said. I feel so fortunate to be sandwiched between Jill and then to be succeeded by Carrie. And Carrie's heard me repeat this so many times, but Carrie, as long as we know each other, I will say it. We were a tiny staff of two people, but I felt like we were actually kind of between six and seven people. I was one and Carrie was the other six because anything possible that needed to be done. Maybe I thought of a few things, but she thought of all the rest before I ever even did, anticipated them and implemented them. And there could not be a more worthy successor than Carrie continuing on the, the, the great tradition of this university museum. So thank you, everybody. Thank you so much, Linda. Um, that means a lot to me. Um, the art of the Jesu really was uh, such an incredible unforgettable experience for for all of us on campus i think you're right uh, not just at the museum across campus um people still talk about it but so thank you for um having made that possible for all of us um uh, my colleague dr michelle demarzo the museum's curator of education and academic engagement isn't with us live tonight but she's prepared some fun facts about our samuel h crest collection of paintings um, this group of 10 paintings, which form the foundation of the museum's permanent collection, came to the university in 2003, but lived in a locked room in the library until the museum was built to house them and other treasures from across campus. I'm Michelle DeMarzo, the museum's curator of education and academic engagement. I'm also a 2007 alumna of Fairfield University, where I was an art history and English major. And at that time, the Bellarmine Hall galleries were just a dusty and slightly eerie basement. The Crest collection of paintings, which had come to Fairfield thanks to the efforts of Dr. Philip Eliasoff, were at that time on view by appointment only in a small room in the library. But here are a few things about the Crest paintings that you might not know. If you recognize this face, it's because he's the museum's unofficial mascot. This portrait entered the Crest Collection, and later our museum, as a portrait of an unknown boy by the painter Vittore Ghislandi. And you can still see that name on a tag on the painting's frame. Only a couple of years ago did we realize that it's actually a self-portrait by the painter Martin Van Matens. How can we be sure? Because a version of the same self-portrait is in the Uffizi in Florence. This painting of Perseus and Andromeda is probably the most popular of the crest paintings among our visitors, especially the younger ones. Who doesn't love a good story from Greek mythology, especially one with a winged monster? But believe it or not, kids often say that his dog-like snout is more lovable than terrifying, despite the teeth. This small panel painting of a Madonna and child was a favorite of Father Jeffrey von Arcks, who was serving as university president when the museum opened, but not for the reason you might expect. He liked that the virgin and child are both depicted as redheads since he'd been one himself as a child. Thanks, Michelle, for that. Um, I would now like to introduce Dr. Mark R. Nemec, the ninth president of Fairfield University and his wife, Susie. Susie graciously serves on the museum's collections committee. Welcome, Dr. Nemec and Susie. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, on behalf of all of us at Fairfield University, 
faculty, staff, students, alumni, parents, and friends. Susie and I just wanted to first express our gratitude to all of you for joining us to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Fairfield University Art Museum. We wanted to take just a moment to speak to the important role the museum plays in our community and how the museum is integral to our mission as the modern Jesuit Catholic University. So I just wanted to say from our arrival here on campus, we've been drawn to the museum, um, not only for its wonderful exhibits in the Metis and the Walsh Galleries, but also for the amazing programming for both adults and the younger members of our local community. Uh, we've been fortunate as all four of our children, now 17 and younger, have been blessed to partake in educational opportunities as individuals, as well as through their school program programming. Notable um, amongst these school, the, the efforts that um, the museum's done uh, is the work done with the Kennedy's, uh, sorry, the Kennedy Turnaround Arts Program, as well as its um, recent virtual efforts to, to uh, speak to the community at large in the schools during this difficult time has just, you know, highlights how committed they are to engaging with our local community. Yeah, and part of these efforts is an embrace of our role as a civic institution and an affirmation of our place as a destination for arts and culture, um, really enmeshing ourselves further in the fabric of our community. Um, as a Jesuit Catholic university, as Provost Siegel alluded to, Fairfield is committed to what Aquinas characterized as the three transcendentals, uh, truth, beauty, and grace. And the University Art Museum stands as an embodiment of our commitment to all three and our dedication to the transformative power of holistic formation. So as we carry forward this 500 year Ignatian tradition, we embrace the call to meet the world as it is and to celebrate not just the 10 years past, but the impact our museum, its collections, its exhibitions, its programs, and just as importantly, its people will have on our community and in our world for generations. Um, and so with all of that in mind um, and reflecting on all the hard work that so many folks have done um, I just propose a virtual toast. Uh, first, to John Meditz for his unceasing support and dedication to the museum. Um, second, to all the faculty and staff who have brought this critical work to life for our community, especially our museum directors, past and present, Jill Dupuy, Linda Walk-Simon, and now Carrie Weber. And finally, not just to this anniversary, the first 10 years of the museum, but to its future, the many, many years of transcendence to come. So salute and cheers. Thank you so much, Mark and Susie, for your, for your kind remarks, for your forward-looking vision, and um, for the wonderful toast. Of all the people here tonight, there's probably no one more important than our next guest, Mr. John Meditz. John is a Fairfield University trustee who spent much of his day in board meetings today. Uh, an alumnus, a museum collections committee member, and a generous benefactor. Welcome, John. Firstly, um, I have no intention of sounding as profound uh, as the prior speakers. Uh, I'm simply here to celebrate a 10th anniversary. Uh, it, it is most gratifying to have had such kind words said by all the prior uh, commentators. Um, I would simply like to give a slightly more humorous, if nothing else, uh, coloration to how, you know, I get, became initially involved in the museum. Uh, <clears throat> and um, I suppose, and I've said this on repeated occasions, you know, when it comes to fundraising, I've warned that if you express an interest in something, you will invariably end up getting to pay for it. <laughs> um, Father Von Arx used to be a, uh, uh, a guest of my home in the country. As he was a Princeton um, alumnus, he would be there for various reunions and other events. And in the course of uh, his various visits, he would uh, uh, make observations. I gather it must have been words from uh, Professor El Eliasov, et cetera. But in any event, you know, because I had made reference to the fact that there were many times I thoroughly enjoyed visiting the Princeton Art Museum uh, <clears throat> and certainly thought that it was an incredible advantage for Princetonians to have such a hands-on experience uh, with the visual arts. Uh, that obviously developed into a conversation on actually the establishment of what was, in Father Von Arx's opinion, uh, an improper use of the, the basement of 
Bellarmine Hall and how appropriate it could be used as a museum. Uh, and I suppose, uh, all I can say is uh, you can guess the end result. <laughs> uh, I, I've been, I was most gratified that once it was announced, uh, you know, I received an awful lot of commentary from people that surprised me. The sub trustees that typically looked at the role of the university is to ensure that, uh, if nothing else, funds were properly expended for the most critical needs uh, arising at any particular point in time. And I was thoughtful that prospectively some might consider uh, a museum a relatively frivolous uh, expenditure for a new museum. Uh, new university, relatively new university, that had any number of substantial demands on its finances. And if nothing else, I will comment, Bill Egan was probably a university trustee, was probably the first to call and say he thought that was one of the best uses of funds that the university could come up with. Because in his opinion, any great university would have some orientation to the visual arts, if nothing else, in addition, performing arts and the arts in general. And without question, that was gratifying that there was support on a, I suppose, financial intellectual level as much as anything, that there was an appreciation. This is certainly not a great collection that we have. It's hopefully one that will develop over the course of time. Uh, and I will make a pitch for any trustees or any friends in the university that would like to make donations. We'll be more than happy to uh, accommodate them so long as they meet certain standards that we as a collection committee have established. Uh, I suppose you could even argue that, um, you know, uh, maybe Frank Carroll's, uh, you know, Elvis painted on black uh, velvet might have an appropriate place in a, in a teaching setting but may not belong in a museum but having said that you know we'd be more than happy to accept any donation uh to the collection and with that i simply like to say congratulations for 10 years may there be many many more thank you so much john we truly wouldn't be here without you today it's great to hear your uh humorous backstory on how um how you came to be so involved in the museum, but we are very appreciative for your continued generosity and support of the museum. Um, thanks in part to the support of John and donors like him, uh, we've presented more than 50 exhibitions in the last 10 years. I'd now like to share an exclusive preview in the form of a brief filmed walkthrough of our newest exhibition, uh, Andrew Forge, The Limits of Sight, which opens in the museum's Bellarmine Hall galleries tomorrow.
Karen Wilkin, the exhibition curator for uh, the Forge exhibition, as gave a wonderful talk this afternoon, um, which if you didn't have a chance to see it, it was recorded and it will be on our website um, next week. Um, but just watching that film, not for the first time, um, after having just heard her talk, I have uh, a whole nother level of appreciation. So I, I encourage you to watch it. Um, I also do want to say the camera is not kind to Andrew Forge's paintings. They, they, um, they're, they're very delicate and ephemeral. Um, so um, those of you who are able to see the exhibition may be surprised by how different they look when you get to see it. All right, now I am so excited to um, make a um, major announcement. Uh, we are really, really excited to share that uh, the museum has just accepted a gift of over 130 artworks by the artist Stephen Pace from the Stephen and Palmina Pace Foundation. This truly transformational gift is the largest in value in the museum's history and it will fill major gaps in our permanent collection. I'm gonna show you just one slide with a couple of images of, of works by, um, by Pace, but um, they give you a, a sense of, um, of his work. Um, we have works spanning his entire career um, from his beginnings as a teenager through to the end of his career. And um, the painting in the middle is an abstract expressionist masterpiece. Um, so anyway, we're, we're super excited. You'll, you'll be learning more about Stephen Pace in the months and years to come. I'd like to uh, take a moment to thank uh, the generous donors and foundations and corporations who have contributed to the museum over the years, some of whom are listed here. Um, we're adding a complete list of donors to the museum website, but we just wanted to take a moment to thank everyone who has supported us. Um, it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a great journey that wouldn't have been possible without all of these people. Though I'm the face of the museum, um, little would be accomplished without the efforts of my wonderful museum colleagues. And I want to thank them um, now for all that they do on behalf of the museum. So to Michelle DeMarzo, Curator of Education and Academic Engagement, Megan Pacwa, Registrar, and Emily McKeon, Museum Assistant, thank you so much for all of your hard work. Finally, to my distinguished guests, thank you all so much for having been a part of these festivities. Thank you to everyone who has watched for being with us for this evening celebration and for joining us on this uh, exciting 10-year journey. While we remain closed to the public this fall, please allow us to keep you engaged and entertained with our virtual programming. It's all being presented through the Quick Center's The Quick Live platform, and we hope you'll tune in frequently and follow us on social media to stay informed. If you'd like to support the museum as we begin our second decade, please join our 2010 Society, founded last year in anticipation of this anniversary year. Your donations in every amount support our crucial needs, diversifying the collection, enhancing exhibitions, and inspiring young minds through our education programs. Please visit our website or contact me directly to learn more. We have some remarkable exhibitions and programs planned for the next few years, so please stay tuned. Thank you again for joining us this evening. I hope you enjoyed the program. Good night, everyone. Mm -hmm.